Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. Welcome to Global Wrestling News. Last weekend, we saw some key matchups and major upsets on the college scene. Jason Nolf handed Isaiah Martinez his very first career loss. Bo Nickel pinned Zach Brunson. And TJ Dudley, well, he locked up a cradle on Sammy Brooks. We don't want you, the fans, missing out on any of the potential of wrestling greatness. So this weekend, we're going to take a look at what you need to watch. At 125, I'm picking number 10, Barlow McGee from Missouri versus number 11, Ryan Milhoff of Oklahoma. Kind of a slow weekend for 125 pounds, but this matchup has intrigued me. Tony? A match to watch because these two have never met in their careers. Milhoff uh, is on a, a four-match winning streak, so definitely a key matchup. Well, McGee has taken a couple losses recently, if you recall, to Dalton uh, Macri and Eddie Clamara. Both of these athletes continue to build off last year, and based off this match, we're going to see if either one of them can make a case to be uh, in the top 10. 133 pounds, we have Red Hot Zane Richards, the number two ranked wrestler from Illinois, taking on number seven, Ryan Taylor from Wisconsin. You're right, Richards uh, is red hot, and he almost majored Jordan Conaway last weekend and is feeling very confident at the moment. Well, Taylor dominated the matchup last year by Tech Fall. He was running red hot a year ago, but it seems to have, well, it seems that he might have lost his momentum. Yeah, uh, two guys ranked in the top eight with uh, some history. I mean, sign me up for that match. Sign me up as well. All right, we go to 141. An easy pick there for me. Third ranked Kevin Jack from NC State taking on Pittsburgh's number five ranked Mike Riosato. Top five meeting between uh, two ACC foes. Kevin Jack got a wake up call though from North Carolina's Joey Ward earlier in the week. Uh, came out on top, but he'll have to wrestle a lot better if he wants to beat Mike. Another top eight match for you at 149. Number three ranked Le'Veon Mays from Missouri will look to keep his undefeated record intact against number eight ranked Alex Richardson from Old Dominion. Richardson has looked great all season. He had a slip up at Arizona State, but that's his only loss, uh, I guess, to somebody other than a top ranked wrestler, Jason Sursis, Jake Suflone. Uh, I'm sticking with the undefeated wrestler from Missouri on this one. All right, wrestling fans, we've got a few more matchups you need to watch this weekend, so stay tuned. This is Global Wrestling News. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back. We've run through four bouts you've got to watch. Are there more? Yeah, there's, there's plenty. Yeah, 157 pounds, hashtag and new. Jason Nolf, number one ranked wrestler now from Penn State against number nine, Brian Murphy is a must watch. Anytime Nolf is on the, the wrestling mat, especially against a top 10 wrestler, you definitely have to uh, find a way to w watch this freshman phenom. Couldn't agree with you more. Another undefeated athlete will test their ranking against a top 10 opponent at 165. It's number three ranked, Isaac Jordan from Wisconsin versus number six, Steven Rodriguez from Illinois. Rodriguez has found new life since bumping up from 141 to 65. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely on fire, going to push uh, Jordan, uh, he's, but he's the reigning Big Ten champ. Uh, he's dangerous from all positions. This will be a close match, and uh, something smells and feels like uh, upset material here. I don't know what upset material smells like, but I'll tell you what, I think you may <laughs> be right. All right, a couple great bouts at 174, but for me, the one to watch will be number eight, Nate Jackson from Indiana against number 15, ranked Miles Martin from Ohio State. We haven't said the words Ohio State yet here in the show, but I guarantee you that's one that you're going to want to watch. Martin already has a 7-5 victory over Jackson, but Jackson is ranked higher. I'm confused. Yeah, I mean, this matchup uh, happened earlier in the season. It was actually Martin's first collegiate competition. Both have over 20 wins, three losses. I think Jackson uh, has a higher ranking just solely based off experience. You know, we, we've seen why Martin was a top 10 recruit. I mean, uh, so, you know, this match can propel Martin in, into the top 10 rankings. He's obviously the, the favorite having a win over him already. I agree. 184 pounds, the match for me. Number three ranked Jack Dachau from Old Dominion versus number seven, Willie Miklas from Missouri. Now, these guys have experience in that history. Close matches. Two returning All-Americans here. Last season, Miklas picked up a 9-7 OT, OT uh, victory, and then uh, Dekau got his revenge at the MAC Championships, winning 6-4. You know, Miklas seems to wrestle better when he's wrestling opponents that are higher ranked than him, so he'll definitely be uh, the guy, I think, that can pull up that upset of the weekend. 
All right, let's go to 197, a must win for number three, Nathan Burak from Iowa. Number four, Brett Parr comes to Carver looking for an upset. Will it happen? Yeah, Friday night's going to be a great duel between two Big Ten uh, teams. Nathan is off to his best start as a Hawkeye, undefeated currently right now. You know, this is a match for the Hawkeye fans to for to see Nathan Burak get over that hump to, to really confidence so, build. Confidence for him and, and fans are just you know, so picky. Uh, when it comes to the Iowa Hawkeyes and really maybe make them feel that he's a solid, high All-American. Another big match to watch at Carver Hawkeye Arena, the heavyweight bout there, number seven ranked Sam Stahl will take on Minnesota's Michael Krolls. Remember, Minnesota's like this cradle of heavyweights, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They have had Tony Nelson and so many other great heavies. He's got a shot at redemption here. You know, he, he definitely has a shot. Uh, he definitely needs to control the ties. These two are really equally matched, but the game plan for, I think, Michael will have to be not getting in those ties. He's going to have to take shots from, from out. Sam Stoll is just so deadly when he gets tied up because he's got a really great And grip. you don't want to you don't want to get caught flat-footed. No, his, his Greco background, if you get caught flat-footed, boom, you're going. Mm -hmm. All right. Folks, there you have it. Plenty of exciting college wrestling to watch this weekend. We've highlighted some of them. Surely there's others, but we want you to stay as in touch as possible. We're going to take it to break. Check out UWW's Move of the Week. We'll be back after this. All right, it's time to catch up with Hollywood Wayne Boyd, usually on the West Coast. This time he's in the mountains, Colorado Springs. Here's a man himself with a brand new episode of As I See It. Wayne, welcome back to the show. Talk to us about the Dave Schultz Memorial. Hey, got a tough schedule this week. Uh, Greco is Thursday, freestyle uh, Friday, and then the women on Saturday. A lot of good wrestling out here in memory of the great Dave Schultz. You know, he gave his life for this sport, won worlds and Olympic medals. And, of course, the movie Foxcatcher was about him. So always proud to be at Dave Schultz. I'd rather see it in Palm Springs than Colorado Springs. I think everybody else in the world would, too. But it's a beautiful day here. Wynn Mahalik, obvious important member to the Tight Mercury Wrestling Club. Can you talk about him for a minute? Oh, wow. What a performance at the U.S. Open this year. Came all the way back from from the archives to win it, prove that he's still capable of being number one. A tremendous young man, uh, just married recently or about to be married. Uh, very proud of Win. Our first Titan Mercury Wrestling Club member back in 2012, won our first New York AC. Great I, I can't call him a kid anymore. He's a great man. He's going to do great things in his life for wrestling and otherwise. Bronze medalist James Green, also an important member and the future, really, of wrestling. Uh, you know, uh, world bronze at 70 kilos. Can he cut to 65 for the Olympic trials and, and, and replace uh, Metcalf? Big question there. Uh, that's the toughest weight class in America right now. You got uh, Steber, you got Oliver, you got Kennedy. Kennedy, I mean, he's massive for that weight class. Very impressed with him. Steber had him beat, however, at the U.S. Open and kind of gave it away at the end. But Kennedy's a force. Uh, Metcalf's going to have trouble hanging on there. Green is in the mix. There's no question about it. We love him. We're, we're all behind him. Talk to us a bit about Logan Steber. You brought him up. He was just elevated to coach. He's in the... Uh... In Russia now, he's in Siberia, someplace in the in, the, in a very cold part of the world, doing what he does. But elevating him to assistant coach at Ohio State's important. Why? Well, he, he's got an incredible reputation. Four-time NCAA champion. He his life is wrestling. I'm so happy to hear that he's going to be the uh, uh, assistant coach there. And you know the guys that are on that team are going to really get value out of just putting their hands on him and him putting his hands on them. So he's going to be an on the mat guy. He's very smart about the sport. His credentials speak for themselves. He could very easily make the Olympic team this year. So a uh, big move for Ohio state. I think it's terrific. Undefeated former California star now at Illinois. 
uh, has his first loss over the weekend. Isaiah Martinez was projected out to be a, uh, a, a much like Kale Sanderson in an undefeated run, but he, he drops one. Um, well, you know, we did see him as unbeatable. He looked unbeatable, but he's human. We're all human. You have a few problems, you have a few injuries, you got a few things in your head that shouldn't be there. You walk into a match with a red shirt freshman, but you can't forget, I believe, and I don't even pronounce this new kid's name right, it's Knopf or Dolph, and I apologize to him. But he, he I think, is a three-time Pennsylvania State champion. Those Pennsylvania State champions don't come easy. Uh, they're tough. And I watched the match uh Martinez was scrambling, doing some of that out the back door stuff, and he got stuck, and he was flat. And guess what? Wake up call. Here it is, uh, late January. Probably the best thing could happen to him going forward to the NCAA championships. Believe me, Isaiah Martinez. He may not. He may drop to rank number two, but I still see him winning the NCAA championship in March a second time as a sophomore. NCAA championships will come up in March, and then after that, of course, it'll be April and the the Olympic uh, trials in Iowa City. Then we advance to the World Cup in Los Angeles at the Forum. We're working on that really hard. The California high school coaches are involved. We're already selling tickets. We're getting people in line. Our goal is to sell out the Forum. Our goal is to bring in big sponsors. Coca-Cola's talking to us. We're also trying to help LA24, who is bidding for the 2024 Olympic Games. So we're going to use the World Cup as a feature event. We need all our stars there. We need all our champions there. Scott, I know you'll be there. Big event, June 11th and 12th at the Forum World Cup. I'll tell you who Everybody will be there. get ready. Global Wrestling News will be at the Forum in June, and I'll tell you what, we're going to have a great time. Wayne, always good to talk to you. Our best to everybody at the Schultz. Yep, we're getting ready to go here, so thanks, everybody. I'm always proud to be on the show and proud to be a sponsor, and, and, and I love wrestling, and I hope everybody realizes that. Well, Titan Mercury's James Green surprised us all by winning a bronze medal at the World Championships, but how will he fare now that he's moved down to 65? We talked to Jordan Burroughs' protege about the transition, the Rio trials, and more. Right now, we're focusing on Istanbul and the upcoming tournaments uh, leading to trials. What's been your experience with Brent Metcalf uh, prior to uh, you know any competition you might be facing here in the future? Um. You know, he lives up to his uh, his name, you know, Brett McCaff. He's going to grind. He's going to wrestle you from beginning to end. Um, we wrestled a couple of times at the OTC at some training camps. And, um, yeah, there are always some great matches back and forth. And, um, yeah, like a lot of scoring. Um, but that's granted that I'm up at a weight class that I wrestled at 70 kilos. So it'll be different to be in his territory and those other guys that are wrestling the field down at their weight and wrestling them. Um, at 65 kilos. What's your game plan should you face him? Is it just try to get him to wrestle your style or what? Uh, I'm going to do what I always do, you know. Um, take a lot of shots. I'm um, looking to score. And um, this past, over this break since the World Championships, we've been working a lot on parterre um, offense. So I'm going to look to try and get points on top, um, not only on my feet, but on top as well. Well, Titan Mercury sponsors Wynn Mahalik for all the right reasons. The 31-year-old recently got married, as a matter of fact, only a few weeks ago. And he joins us to talk a little bit about his coming trip to the Ukraine and his preparation for the Olympic trials. You know, Titan Mercury is great. They've really supported a lot of athletes. But I feel like, you know, Wayne and I have been close since the very beginning. Andy and I have talked since the very beginning. And uh, they're very supportive of what I do. You know, they... They know that I have, I plan my training and my competitions well, and, and they trust that. You know, they throw in uh, what they think needs to be done, but they're very supportive. As long as I'm working hard and working towards that Olympic gold medal goal, they're super supportive of everything that I've done as a coach, as an athlete, and as a person, you know, with my wedding having just uh, – concluded and moving on from that with my wife but you know they were very very supportive of giving me that time after uh u.s nationals olympic trials qualifier to uh have that part of my life and have that joy to become a husband 
All right, wrestling fans, stick around. Quick hits from College to Greco. That's after the break. It's GWN. Well, last week, both of us and Wayne Boyd, the trio, actually agreed and predicted that Isaiah Martinez would come out on top against Jason Nolf. Did we overlook Nolf or overhype Martinez? I don't think you can ever overhype a returning national champ, undefeated national champ. I mean, Nolf is looking to be that guy, and uh, he wants to be the guy now that's hyped, and he stepped up big. He definitely did. Obviously, we're not making any excuses for Isaiah, but watching this match, something looked a little off to me, and knowing what I know, he was not feeling well. But he didn't put his tail between his legs and go back to the locker room. No, he sat on the bench, and he encouraged his teammates on, as you might think he would, the classy kid that he is. And then he signed autographs till the very last kid got one. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, he just... You know, for somebody that I didn't know what was going on with him, he just, he looked maybe a little stressed. Maybe he was sick. He just looked white. Something was wrong with him. And usually when you're really stressed and nervous, that can just break you down. Well, the only bright spot for Illinois, perhaps Zane Richards. He crushed Jordan Conway, 8-2. Did the Illini have another national title contender in Richards? You know, he's he's ranked second in the country. Yeah, so it's not a huge stress stretch. Um, you know, he has a big match this weekend against Ryan Taylor that we noted earlier in, this, in the uh, show. Richards has that swagger. He has the confidence to be a national champ. I think uh, Clark is my favorite, but uh, Richards definitely is, is uh, you know, stepping up his game on and off the mat. And you, you can't just be a good wrestler. You just have to have that confidence going into that big stage in New York. All right, the final three spots on the women's Pan American team have been filled. After a special wrestle-off took place in Iowa City at Carver Hawkeye, winning their best of three series, Helen Marulis, Ali Reagan, and Tamira Mensa. With only one weight qualified for the Olympics, is this the best possible lineup to qualify for the remaining five? I think our women's programs continue to improve, uh, really outperforming the men. I mean, uh, Titan Mercury's Mensa is going to make some noise this year. I can just feel it. How about Ali Reagan? She beat Lee Janes, if you recall, in two straight without giving up one point. She's ranked number one in takedown wrestling's rankings for a reason. You know, she was coming off a bronze medal from the, the Open Cup in Russia and has this weight in lockdown. Uh, Jane's provisor was coming down from 63 kilograms, so maybe the weight cut was an issue for her. It might have been. Well, the Pan Am qualifier will take place March 4th, Frisco, Texas. We'll, of course, talk more about that in coming weeks. Well, the United States grabbed four medals in a fifth place finish at the Grand Prix of Grab Open on Saturday, winning a silver, the Rao Plow. Joe Rao, he finished 2-1 at 98 kilos. Bronze medals went to past world team members Jesse Thielke and Patrick Martinez, along with 2011 junior world team member Daniel Miller. Looking at that lineup from Croatia, how would you rate the U.S. performance overall? I talked with uh, Dan Lobdale, who has got the skinny on these guys. Both of, both of us agreed that we didn't send our best lineup over there. You know, the guys that were expected to medal came home with one. Uh, Rao, I mean, uh, he, he is placed in the last I six. I love that name, Rao Plow. Rao Plow. I need to get a T-shirt. and we, we still haven't got one since we had him on the radio show, but... You know, he, he's on fire overseas. He's won, or not won, but he's came home with a medal probably in the last six or seven tournaments from wrestling over there, which is not easy to do. We see guys that have success here in the country go overseas and just falter, but he, he comes home with a medal. You bet he does. Well, for the U.S. to win a team medal, the older guys have to step up, specifically Bryce Sidoris. I think his biggest troubles last weekend was just his draw, and uh, he's up a weight class. He lost to an Olympic silver medalist and a close one on criteria to the 2014 World Bronze Medalist. So, shouldn't be an excuse, but that's a pretty pretty damn tough draw. Yeah, I'd say. Well, it's time for our Under Armour Athlete of the Week. There were a lot of great performances to choose from, but I think this one's pretty obvious. Tony, tell us who it is and what they've won. It's got to be uh, Jason Nolf. <laughs> I mean, a clear-cut favorite, Jason Nolf over Isaiah Martinez. All right, hopefully this makes up for our poor predictions. I don't know if a piece will do it, but... I think I'm 0-2 recently, but uh, I think I, I feel real good about my predictions and with those matches to watch this weekend. All right, much like Isaiah Martinez's winning streak, this show's over, Tony. And on behalf of our producer, Wayne Boyd, our executive producer, Andrew F. Barth, I'm Scott Casper, and we'll see you next week on Global Wrestling News.